Earlier this month, the World Health Organization honored a woman who was never given the respect she was due, but whose cells, taken without her consent, led to groundbreaking, life-saving medical advances for polio, cancer, HIV, and most recently, the COVID vaccines. Her name was Henrietta Lacks. She was a black woman dying of cancer in 1950s America, and her legacy is hard to overstate. With us now for more in Baltimore, Maryland, her great-granddaughter, Victoria Baptiste. She is a nurse specializing in diabetic care and part of HeLa 100, the Henrietta Lacks Initiative, her family's year-long outreach and education campaign. It's an honor to meet you. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, and I, I recognize that for us, um, a lot of this information is new, but I also recognize that this is a painful um, experience uh, for your family. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, just to take us back to the beginning, how did your great grandmother uh, cancer cells make it to labs around the year, uh, world years after she had died? Um, so, it's a bit of a mystery to most people how her cells have been able to live, you know, so long outside of her body. Um, even here we are some 70 years later. Um, her cells, it was just, just wrote, her cells were just, it was meant to do what it was supposed to do. That's the only real explanation I can give you because the doctors who discovered um, her cells li living outside the human body, they really didn't have an answer as to why her cells were able to live um, outside the human body as robustly as they did without needing as much nourishment um, that cells that we know today need, they require to be able to stay alive for us to do the research that we do on them. Um, we do know that there were some type, some medical um, things that made them special, like the place in which, you know, the cancer landed on her, you know, onto the cell, onto the tumor, and the way that it multiplied, um, I'm sure that has some effect of, as to why her cells are able to be this robust. Um, but we really don't know, you know, why her cells were able to do as much as they did as earlier on in science um, without all the things that we know about, you know, cell culture and things now. Uh, was your great-grandmother, Henrietta, did she give consent for them to take those cells? No, and that's the part, like the research portion of it is is what the injustice really is. Um, they have like these, back then they say that, you know, they had these blanket-like consent forms. Well, yes, they, people consented for care, but they did not consent for research. So that's a totally different thing. So her cells, her tumor lesion was taken and taken to the lab with the intent of trying to have these cells to live outside their body. It wasn't just her specifically that they were trying to find the cells to live outside the body for. They just knew that they needed that to be able to make any medical advancements for treatments in general. Hers just were the ones that were able to make that um, historic event, but it, it was not because she consented to do so. Now, had they asked her, I believe that she would have um, been willing to help science so other people wouldn't suffer the way that she had or she did. Um, but she wasn't given that option. Was your family um, ever asked? No. No, I had family didn't even know that her cells were still living and being used for decades later, um, you know, after her cells had already been in research and already causing, you know, medical advancements as such as like the polio vaccine back then. Um, we had no idea. What did that feel like to know that a part of your great grandmother was being used in this way. Yes, it was being used to help people, but it was used mm -hmm. in this way where her family didn't even know this was happening. That that type of um, unethical type of um, way of procuring herself was what the issue was. We were our family's happy that our you know grandmother and great grandmother selves have been able to um, help so many people, save so many lives, and even create lives through like in vitro fertilization. Um, but that still doesn't you know, negate the fact that, you know, this was such a, a gross ethical, you know, unethical type of um, way of treatment. Um, and we're still, you know, we want to make sure that using a platform that we have today that other people's family members don't have to go through that type of injustice today. Um, how did you find out this was happening? Um, it was actually by accident, you know, by coincidence. Um, my 
grandfather's wife at the time, um, Bob, Bobette Lacks, I was actually having lunch at a friend's house and um, her friend's um, brother, I believe it was, came um, into the house. And after introductions were made, um, he said, Lex, that's not a very common name. Do you know a Henrietta Lex? And she told him, like, that's my mother-in-law's name. And that's when he proceeded to tell her that, you know, he worked at Hopkins, you know, they had been using the cells in research. Um, and that was like the first really official way by, you know, us knowing that Hopkins was using her cells in research at that time. Um, later on, that would be, you know, Rolling Stone articles and things that, that told us that the cells were being used, but no one ever came to the family um, and told them that, hey, you know, we have just have these cells, we're using them, um, you know, for research. They never asked for permission or consent. Uh, we definitely found out by accident. Um, you know, I think last year when uh, the Black Lives Matter movement um, w became a global movement, uh, we mm -hmm. started talking, having these really necessary conversations, um, mm -hmm. painful as they may be. Uh, I mm -hmm. never found out about Katherine Johnson, who played a pivotal role uh, with NASA in getting a person on the moon and with your grandmother. Her cells uh, were pivotal in medical research. Um, so mm -hmm. explain to us, what are some of the medical breakthroughs that happened because of your great-grandmother's uh, or HeLa cells? Well, first, I wanted to just mention, since you mentioned outer space, her cells actually did go into outer space to test uh, what zero-degree um, gravity would do um, for human cells. Um, but recently, well, let's start back at the beginning. She her cells were po made it possible for um, polio vaccinations, um, again, for in vitro fertilization, for a lot of our insulin that we have now for diabetic patients, um, for as recently as the HPV vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccines are just a few of the medical advancements that have been um, been able to be because of ourselves. Um, which is incredible. Um, the WHO recently honored your uh, um, Henrietta Lacks. And to think that mm -hmm. during this pandemic, we know that um, the Black community has really been impacted by COVID. And then to find out that uh, these healer cells came from uh, mm -hmm. a Black woman, um, how does that, what, if, what impact does that have on your family to know that your family is part of history? Many histories. Um, for our family, it just solidifies. Yes, my great grandmother did just. Um, we just were able to get an award on her behalf. It was from the WHO. It was the Director's General Award, um, which had never been given to um, anybody, especially somebody you know that had already passed away. That's been able to create these medical advancements. But for our family, knowing um, knowing the background of our, what our loved one had went through, what Henrietta went through. It's just made it more um, solidified our causes to, one, take back our family's narrative for us to speak um, our truth ourselves and to try to make sure that other people don't have to go through this type of injustice again. We're um, using this as a way to fuel us um, to do something positive, um, trying to help combat health equity issues, um, social injustices, especially in medicine, that we still see that today. We don't want to believe that those things still happen, but they do. We want to educate patients on what their, um, what their options are in healthcare, that you, know, you don't have to just go um, see one physician and just take that physician's word for you. Do have a right to a second opinion? You do have a right to your medical record. So we want patients to know what their rights are, what their options are, because no one took that time to um, have those conversations with our loved one, with Henrietta um, back then. Our family is also um, partnering up with people like, you know, with companies like the WH WHO and um, our sisters out here fighting cancer. We just had some um, meetings with uh, a few of the first ladies of Nigeria because our family is really passionate about trying to eliminate cervical cancer because we know that it is possible if we can, you know, get more education out there about HPV and how important it is to be vaccinated, not just for young women, but also for young men, we can potentially, or no, we can eradicate cervical cancer that way. So um, the injustice that happened to our, our loved one is just 
helping us to fuel some positivity so we can ensure that these type of injustices don't continue on in our time. And I should just mention that uh, Henrietta died from cervical cancer. So in a way, it's a full mm -hmm. circle moment. And her cells, as we mentioned, uh, they weren't just shared. They were actually sold. Uh, do yeah. you know um, how much profit they have generated? I, I don't think anybody can tell you exact numbers, but I will tell you that a multi-billion dollar industry um, <laughs> was cultivated from her cells. You know, we have big pharma and all that good stuff that that came about because of her cells, because of the research they were able to do and the advancements they were able to create from using her cells. So I know upwards of billions and billions of dollars. Well, um, I know that in uh, the UK, there's a statue that was um, uh, done in honor mm -hmm. of her um, and the honor from the WHO. But a lot of people have said, you know, have asked this question, why hasn't your family uh, received financial in uh, restitution or have you? Our family definitely has not received any financial restitution. Um, why? Um, <laughs> Uh, there are a plethora of reasons why, but we, I think that's more of a question that we need to ask the companies that have been able to monetarily benefit from um, our loved ones' cells over these, you know, over these 70 some years as to why the family hasn't been compensated. Because we don't know why. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, there, there hasn't been any offering of anything or having conversations as to, oh, we know that we've made these, you know, this type of money off of your loved ones' cells. Um, what can we do? We don't. We haven't had any of those type of conversations. So why is a good question, and we would like to know the answer to that as well. Well, to prevent this from happening to someone else, mm -hmm. um, have laws or ethics changed so this doesn't happen again? Um, some things um, are like again, our family is trying to reclaim our our story, our narrative, um, and and part of that um, is. So that we can help people that so that they won't go through these things that we went through. We have the Henrietta Lacks Enhancing um, Cancer Research Act um, to the study that, that was funded by the government, clinical trials, including the NIH. Um, it's a long overdue step towards diversifying clinical trials. Um, that's one of the things that has changed that we've been able to do with that um, Henrietta Lacks Enhancing um, Cancer Research Act. Um, we know that we need more representation for people of color in research because we are predisposed to, to certain things that other ethnicities are not. So if we're not represented in these clinical trials, we can't have that type of medication that's geared specifically to us. Um, so we're advocating um, to get more representation and diversification in research as well. And that's something that's came about, you know, after this, everybody else is starting to learn about our great grandmother and all the great things she's done. Those well, are just some of the things that have um, changed so far. Well, in our final moment here, um, your gram your great grandmother has been talked about, written about. Oprah made a movie about her story. Um, but what was she really like, um, as you have been told? From what I've been told, she was um, she was definitely a pioneer of activism in the community. Um, I say that because she helped a lot of families um, do, matriculate from Virginia up to Maryland so they can have better jobs and create better lives for their families. Um, I was told that she loved to dance, she loved music, and she loved to dress, you know, dress nicely. Um, but above all that, she was just a caring, loving person. And I think that that is the biggest part of her legacy that the rest of us are taking with us. And that's a part of the reason why um, we have this Healer 100 Henrietta Lacks initiative that you can check out at healer100.org. Uh, with family, we're just the family's initiatives all in one place um, that we're trying to fight and advocate for that social, uh, I mean, for health equity and to try to right some of the wrongs that happened to our great grandmother. Uh, uh, Victoria, thank you so much for spending some time with us. It's been really uh, nice having you on the show to understand a little bit more about who she was as an individual. And of course, thank you uh, for all that she's done. It doesn't feel quite enough. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on, Victoria. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.